and welcome to your Pharmacology Clear and Simple, Chapter 15, Endocrine System Medications, Lecture for Module 15. Our objectives are as follows. Define all key terms. Discuss six of the major endocrine glands and their functions. Differentiate between hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. And identify the effects of each on the bodies and the medications used to treat each. Contrast hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia and discuss the medications used to treat each. Explain the proper way to handle, store, and administer insulin. And differentiate between adrenal gland insufficiencies and oversecretion and discuss the medications to treat each. So starting with the endocrine system, the endocrine system is made up of many organs that secrete hormones which act as messengers to trigger a desired response in the body. The brain's hypothalamus, known as the body switchboard, triggers the release of hormones from the pituitary gland. So the hyperthalamus, again, is known as the body switchboard because it tells the pituitary gland what to do. The pituitary gland also located in the brain is known as the master gland because it secretes most of the body's hormones. These hormones include follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and luteinizing hormone known as LH which are important to female reproduction and antidiuretic hormone ADH which helps prevent loss of water by the kidneys. Thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, triggers the thyroid gland to function. So again, we talked about the FSH, the LH, the ADH, and the TSH. The gonads are the sex organs, and these consist of the ovaries in the females and the testes in the males, and are responsible for secreting estrogen and progesterone in the ovaries and androgens, testes, in response to hormones released by the pituitary. So androgens include testosterone. The thyroid gland is found in the neck and it regulates metabolism as well as blood and bone calcium. Calcium is regulated through the secretion of calcitonin, which forces calcium ions into bone. The four parathyroid glands on the thyroid gland are responsible for the concentration of sodium and calcium in the blood and urine. The hormone parathormone pulls the calcium out of the bone and into the bloodstream. The pancreas is located in the abdominal cavity and has two major functions. The first function is that it secretes the digestive enzymes into the small intestines. And the second function is that it regulates blood glucose by secreting insulin to lower blood sugar and glucagon to increase blood sugar. In patients with cystic fibrosis, the ducts in the pancreas become blocked with thick mucus, making them unable to secrete the digestive enzymes. Excuse me. Patients with cystic fibrosis must take replacement enzymes for the rest of their lives with every bit of food they ingest in order to be able to digest and use the food that they eat. There are two adrenal glands and the adrenal glands are located above the kidneys and the secretion of the adrenocorticotropic hormone ACTH by the pituitary stimulates the release of cortisol and the glucocorticoids to control the fight or flight response. 
The outer cortex of the adrenal gland secretes cortisol to maintain blood pressure and cardiovascular function. This slows the body's immune system and it helps to maintain steady glucose levels. The inner medulla secretes epinephrine in response to stressful situations. The penile gland in the brain secretes melatonin in response to input from the eyes. The more light that enters, the less melatonin is released. Melatonin helps us sleep, and thus in darker hours, we tend to fall uh, asleep and feel sleepier. And again, the more light that enters, the less melatonin is released. That's why you've seen a lot of studies come out here where they talk about the blue light and people that are on the computer and on their phones, even up to, you know, half hour to an hour before can definitely have sleeping issues. And again, it's related back to not producing the melatonin. Um, because the more light that enters, the less melatonin is released um, and in darker hours. And after you've shut your phones and your computers off, you obviously have uh, less light. So it is suggested that you turn those computers and phones and unplug an hour before you go to bed, and that can help a lot with sleeping. Let's look at our comprehension checkpoint one. Which of the following glands is known as the master gland? You should have selected B, the pituitary gland. Great job. So now let's look at medications for thyroid disorders. Medications are used to treat disorders of the endocrine system and can be separated into three categories. Those for thyroid and parathyroid disorders, those for pancreatic disorders, and those used to treat adrenal disorders. So we're looking here at the thyroid gland. The thyroid is an on switch for the body. The two hormones, T3, and T4 stimulate every tissue in the body to produce proteins and to increase the amount of oxygen used by the cells. If the thyroid fails, the patient has less energy and every cell is affected in their body. So hypothyroidism is indicated when the T3 and T4 are decreased Prolonged hypothyroidism can lead to skin and tissue disorders called myxedema. Cretinism is slow brain growth in children, so a decrease of these hormones in utero and early infancy can cause the cretinism, which is slow brain growth, again, in children. So rapid treatment can prevent mental and growth retardation. Hypothyroidism is treated with oral hormone replacement therapy, and that's HRT. And let's move on. Looking at hyperthyroidism, this occurs when there is an excess of thyroid hormone. This can cause Graves' disease, and this is characterized by bulging eyes, hyperactive metabolism, goiter, which is the enlarged thyroid, and weight loss. If hyperthyroidism is untreated, thyroid storm can occur, and a thyroid storm is a life-threatening medical condition that includes symptoms of tachycardia, hyperthermia, chest pain, sweating, weakness, heart failure, anxiety, shortness of breath, and disorientation. Hyperthyroidism is treated with radioactive isotopes or surgical removal of the thyroid gland, the thyroidectomy. You should know what that means because you take thyroid and ectomy, and ectomy is one of your bingo words. So what does that mean? That means the removal of the thyroid. If the thyroid gland is removed or damaged by radiation therapy, HRT may be required, which HRT is hormone replacement therapy. 
So grave disease, we talked about the bulging eyes, the hyperactive um, metabolism, the goiter, and the weight loss. And we talked about the thyroid storm, and it just sounds awful with tachycardia, the hypothermia, sweating, weakness, disorientation. Um, those are both things that you would want to know what some of those um, symptoms are, especially in dealing with endocrine system disorders. So now we're at comprehension checkpoint two. All of the following are symptoms of thyroid storm except. Good, you should have chosen bradycardia. Now we're looking at medications to treat pancreatic disorders. Remember, we broke them down into those three things, so we're moving on to pancreatic disorders. When the pancreas is not functioning properly, glucose levels will either be too high or too low. So hyperglycemia means high glucose, and this leads to problems with wound healing, high blood pressure, and nerve damage. Hypoglycemia, which means low glucose, can cause death because there is not sufficient energy to fuel all of the cells of the body. This is treated by small doses of glucose. So sometimes the hard candies, uh, instaglucose gel or BD glucose, or if the patient is unable to tolerate or unconscious, sometimes they will need an injection of glucagon. Let's talk a little bit about diabetes again. So diabetes mellitus is characterized by hyperglycemia and is category, categorized excuse me, as type 1 or type 2. Patients with type 1 diabetes do not produce insulin and therefore cannot use the glucose circulating in the blood. And these patients must receive insulin injections to lower glucose levels to normal by funneling the insulin into the body tissues where it's needed. If glucose levels remain high, damage to the eyes, kidneys, heart, and nerves occur. And eventually, this leads to kidney failure, blindness, heart failure, and possibly death. Patients with type 2 diabetes may still produce insulin, but the body is unable to lower glucose levels in the blood. So the body responds by producing more and more insulin until the pancreas finally cannot keep up with the demand. So treatment of type 2 diabetes includes diet, exercise, and if needed, oral diabetic agents. These medications encourage the pancreas to release insulin. So let's talk about a few points. So insulin helps move glucose into the body tissues where it's needed for cellular function. Increased urination where cells excrete water to flush glucose out of blood vessels and into kidneys. We also see a sign and symptom of increased thirst because the cells are actually dehydrated and increase hunger because the glucose in the bloodstream is not making it into the cells where it's needed. If glucose levels remain too high, damage to the eyes, kidneys, heart, and nerves occur, and eventually this again leads to kidney failure, blindness, heart failure, and death. Some of the signs uh, that you see if glucose is very high, um, the patient could be lethargic, their breath could have a fruity smell to it, ketoacidosis, which is the insufficient burning of fat, and again, this can lead to the seizures, coma, and death. Insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus is most commonly diagnosed in childhood, but can occur at any age, and genetic Virus exposure and pancreatic injuries are contributing factors for developing the insulin-dependent diabetic mellitus. Again, looking at, uh, this is categorized as the type 1 diabetic that we're, we've been speaking of.